Hi, it's Ross from SDS. Welcome back to the channel and video number 91. Today we're going to discuss uh, system redundancy. It's a question we get asked pretty often. Uh, should I buy single ECU, dual ECU? What sort of redundancy is offered by SDS? So uh, hopefully this video will answer some of your questions about that today. Instead of watching me talk, we'll have some photos of some cool airplanes here and uh, we'll get on with it. So with SDS on the Lycoming and Continental systems, you have the choice of uh, single or dual. That goes down to the uh, fuel pumps, single or dual, uh, and ECU, single or dual. And in the case of uh, dual ECUs, we always have one ECU firing one set of spark plugs and the other ECU firing the other set of spark plugs. We sold about uh, 1,400 systems uh, with single ECUs over the years. Those have accumulated something around 500,000 flight hours. And uh, we find, though, in the later years, like after 2015, we're selling a lot more dual systems now that they're available. Some people feel more comfortable with that, and uh, that's understandable. Our company, RV6, is equipped with a single ECU, and I've been flying that for over 17 years. Uh, haven't had an issue with that to date. Uh, not something I worry about too much. However, your choice may be uh, different. Depends a bit on uh, what sort of terrain you fly over, what kind of missions you fly, and your comfort level. And uh, like I said, most people seem to be choosing the dual ECU route. The trade-off for dual ECUs, of course, is more weight, more complexity, more cost, but uh, that may well be offset by the peace of mind it gives you to have uh, another ECU to go to if the primary was to fail for some reason. So we'll just take a look at the hardware differences. Here's the single fuel pump. This is the dual fuel pump. Single ECU. Dual ECU with two completely independent circuit boards. These are the four cylinder injector relay boxes and these switch injector function from one ECU over to the other. This is a six cylinder relay box and uh, this has the same function, switches injectors from one ECU over to the other. And here's the controlling switch layout on Les Kearney's RV10 with dual SDS ECUs. On the left we've got uh, alternator battery switch, an ECU power, so we've got on which is ship's main power, in the middle battery position for backup and then off, then uh, ECU select which is really the injector select. Normally on the six cylinder, both systems are running at all times. One's controlling three injectors, the other's controlling the other three, and each one controls one set of coils. So to do the so-called mag check, we've got the coil switch. We can select uh, one, two, or both. Les also has a backup alternator, so we've got the next switch. He can select uh, either one there. Final switch on the right hand side is for the fuel pumps. So we've got uh, off in the middle, pump one or pump two. Normally we just fly with one pump uh, once we're above 500 feet AGL or so, but uh, your preference there again. Obviously with an electrically dependent airplane, electrical power is absolutely essential. If you lose all of that, you're a glider. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to electronic fuel injection. The wiring and uh, fusing is absolutely critical and of course we always recommend you have some sort of backup power either a backup battery or backup alternator or both on the reliability side out of about uh, 700,000 flight hours we've only actually seen one true ecu failure that aircraft was equipped with dual ecus and the uh, user got back to base okay on the backup so we have seen two or three other issues where the engine was running rough and uh, they had a backup ECU. They were able to switch over to that and get back to base okay. These are not really ECU issues. They're poor installation issues or electrical system problems outside of the ECU, but uh, they're still able to get back with the backup where maybe they couldn't have with uh, just a single ECU. With regards to the fuel pumps, if you've only got one fuel pump and it fails, well, you're a glider. So the kits, uh, most of them come standard with uh, dual pumps, and that's what most people order. So with all this talk of ignition and fuel redundancy, we should probably have a bit of a reality check. Most of us are flying single engine aircraft with a single engine, which has plenty of single points of failure. And if you're over the rocks of Montana, like I am in this photo, and the crank breaks or it throws a rod, well, you're a glider. 
So there's certainly risks to flying over terrain like this, regardless of what type of ignition and fuel systems you have up front. That's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.